Hey everyone, so today I thought I'd take you through some of the menus and the, uh, a quick demo of the Bluetooth programming for the TID radio. I don't know if it's TID radio or TID radio, I hear you know, so many people pronounce it so many different ways. This is the H3, so this is the smaller version and may look pretty big on the screen here, but uh, you can see how hopefully how small this thing is in my hand. Uh, I did do an unboxing video. Uh, I'll leave that at the very end of this video so um, you don't have to bother with it if you don't want to. Uh, let's get to the important stuff here. So anyways, this radio is available on Amazon. It's around $35, believe it or not. Um, I did order this one through TID Radio's website uh, directly. My thought was I'd rather pay the extra couple of bucks uh, with the chance of getting a brand new one in the box versus, you know, risking uh, getting one that had been returned through Amazon. Don't know if that's the case, but just kind of wanted to be played safe, uh, you know, rather safe than sorry. It did take almost two weeks for this thing to get shipped. Um, and then it was a couple dollar shipping, but there were, there's plenty of YouTubers out there uh, that have reviewed this radio that actually have a 10% uh, discount code. Uh, that's what I ended up using on this one. So anyways, let's get started. Uh, when you first power this thing up, what's really interesting is the fact uh, that... Back up in the 90s with two points uh, in the that's great. So we got somebody talking here. We'll just switch the channel. So um, what's interesting is the welcome screen says the H8, which is the bigger brother to this one. I don't know if they use the same software. What the deal is, uh, you're able to change that welcome message through your... Um, through the programming. So let's bring this in a little closer. The screen will probably change here. Okay, so uh, if you notice the screen uh, blanked out, I have, had, I have it set to blank out after, I can't remember if it's 10 or, uh, I think it's 15 seconds. And what'll happen is these green LEDs on the front, um, every now and then, there they go, they just flashed. Um, you can set that also to flash, just to let you know that the radio is still on. Uh, that you don't have to press uh, a button to see if it's on or not. So if we take a look here, the menu here, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here on a fairly small screen. I think they laid it out pretty well. But the, on the very top, you've got this bar that goes across. That is your power um, uh, bar. Uh, that shows how many watts that your radio is pushing out. Um, currently, I have it set to high power, so when I do hit transmit, it'll go all the way to five. Uh, the little antenna here, uh, shows your, your incoming signal. Um, I think that's just kind of, it's out there. It doesn't matter how strong or weak the signal is. Um, it'll always show, you know, like a full five bars on there. So I think it's just there to show you that, yeah, you're receiving something. A uh, little H that's out there uh, signifies that it's on high power. The W is, this is in wideband mode. Uh, the battery indicator, even though there's no percentage on here, it is pretty uh, accurate as far as you know, displaying, you know, a full battery, half battery as it gets down. I know some of the, the Baofengs, you know, the, the battery indicator in there is pretty much useless. So anyways, we've got the frequency uh, for the main section that you're on. It'll tell you the channel number. Um, this double arrow th uh, thing right here tells you that dual watch is on uh, so that it'll actually listen to both channels. Uh, the S is the battery saver, and then the note that's here uh, just says that I've got the, the beep turned on. What's cool is this little bottom section here, and you can change this in the menu to display the channel name that you gave it or the frequency. Uh, your top, you've got your top uh, frequency, you've got your bottom frequency. I have them both set to the same right now. I could actually uh, change this so that we've got two different ones. As you change to the frequency, um, uh, as you change your channel, uh, it will display the frequency that's showing up and the channel number that it's assigned to. So now if I go back to the B range on the bottom, um, it'll show me that that one is channel two again, and that's the frequency. So this is kind of a nice setup. You've got your, your A and your B zone down here, and then whatever one you're displaying uh, will show the frequency and the channel number up in your upper area. Kind of a cool way they, they laid that out. Um, this other little section here for off, uh, this shows if you've got any, um, 
uh, any uh, DTS or any kind of tone set for any particular repeaters. Uh, right now, both of these repeaters that I have in here, um, I have, uh, there's no tone set on the receive side, so they say off. But what's really cool is if I ended up uh, transmitting on one of them, as I push the button to transmit, it'll tell me if it's a CT, uh, here we go again, CTCSS tone, or if it's a DTC tone, as you're pressing and transmitting. And then what's cool is, um, let's say it's a, a five megahertz offset, as you're transmitting, the frequency will actually change to that frequency that you're transmitting on. So that's pretty nice, just a kind of a, a, you know, a secondary reminder or whatever to show you that you do have everything set up straight. So um, what's really cool about this is, of course, the Bluetooth that you can turn on. You can press the Bluetooth button, press and hold it. Your little Bluetooth symbol will come on, and then you can uh, program it through your smartphone, and we'll do that shortly. So uh, just the menu that's out here. This is pretty cool. Some of the menu items, you know, we're, of course, we're in wideband. You could set the squelch. Transmit power, I've set to high. This power save is kind of kludgy. I was reading it in the book. It's just weird to understand. I just left it as the, as the default. Uh, your frequency step. Um, here's your backlight. I have it set to 15 seconds before it turns off. Uh, one of the problems or one of the drawbacks that I did find, and actually, just for the heck of it, let's go here. And I'm going to turn it to continue so that it doesn't keep turning off on us. Um, and I did there. There is no menu option to allow you to adjust the display brightness. It's on full blast all the time unless you know the the display blanks out. Um, I know with my uh, my Ocean my uh, KG Q10H. What's kind of nice is you can not only set the um, the background illumination level, but then also when it, after five or 10 seconds, instead of going into sleep mode with it totally going blank, you can set another brightness um, level to kind of dim it down without going all the way dark. So uh, let's see, if we go back into the menu again, so we're at backlight, uh, beep, the beep is on. Uh, this is your timeout. Uh, I think the default is 60 seconds. I changed it to 120. Uh, let's see, uh, your, my receive CT, CTCSS, that one is off. Uh, of course, the transmit DCS is off. This is now in transmit mode. I've, this is the tone to open up the uh, repeater. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other ones? Scan. Uh, I currently have this one off to scan, but it's real easy to select the channels that you want to scan. Um, in the display area on the top section, I wanted to display the name. Uh, in the bottom section, I also wanted to display the name. Uh, direction, let's see what else we have. The memory channel, I think there was one other one. Uh, squelch tail, I have set to off. Roger beep, that's set to off. And then a lot of these other ones are just a default. Uh, let's see, I think that's probably about it. Uh, that you can also update the firmware version, which is pretty nice. There's a cable that they give you. You can do that through the computer. I've yet to do that. I could see that this version is actually from March, so I may go out there and see if there's a new one. This is the breath LED setting. This is the one that I told you about. When the screen blanks out, uh, every 10 seconds, the green LEDs will flash just to let you know that, you know, the radio is still on and listening. It's just that the display is blanked out. Uh, your power on message... Um, it's set to message. And then of course, you know, you can change that in the, in the programming uh, app. And then this is what's really cool. Uh, my Ocean doesn't even have this. I've yet to, to try this out. The mic gain, you've got an adjustable gain here. Um, I think on one of our next net meetings, I'm going to um, see if somebody will let me know how that sounds and see if it actually even makes a difference. And uh, AM band is off. What's cool is this thing will uh, pick up aircraft, uh, you know, on the lower 100 uh, megahertz band. If you do set those to scan or you have it in there, you would set the AM band to on. And uh, let's see, let's go back in here. Uh, I don't know what these, and then we're, we're back to 
uh, the first menu option. So uh, let's do, I will go into the app now. Um, this app is available not only for the iPhone, but also for Android uh, devices. I've got an iPhone 15. So we'll go through and I'll show you how to um, set these up. The main thing is, is that you have to have this Bluetooth indicator on um, so that your phone goes and picks it up. So, all right, let's take a look at the app. All right. So what you end up doing for, at least for the iPhone, um, out at the App Store, you go ahead, you download this program called OD Master. I don't know if it's Odd Master or OD Master, how it's pronounced. Uh, it's a free free app. Uh, once you download it, uh, you would come in here, run it, and you get this login screen now. Now, I have not registered. I wasn't really a big fan of throwing my email out there and everything else just to be able to do this. I mean, when you go and you use someone else's uh, computer programming software for any of the other radios or even Chirp, you know, you normally don't have to log in. So I just didn't want my information out there. So I'll just go ahead and say skip login. The only issue I did find is that without having a login, you can't save your settings. Um, you know, the only time that would that would be that would come in handy is if you got an issue with your radio or you have to wipe it out. Um, you don't want to have to start from scratch. Um, you know, you've got it saved. Uh, in my case, what I do is I skip the login and then I basically just download from the radio every single time. So um, on the radio, as I showed you before, we do have the Bluetooth connection on. If I end up clicking here on connect Bluetooth, here's the device that's out there, the TDH3. Uh, I will go ahead and click on that and it should connect to it. And there it is. Um, to select the model. This was a little bit tricky too. Um, I think I had selected, let me double check, TID radio, yes. Uh, it's the TDH3 and mine is set up for ham. So I will go ahead and say ham. Uh, and then the next one is read. So we'll say read. It's gonna read from the radio. Right now in the radio, you can't see it. It's showing a percentage. Bluetooth programming, it's at 30%, 40% going on. So it really doesn't take too long. You also have the progress bar going across as you can see. And we're just about done. And here we go. So here's what the screen looks like. So when you come here, it shows you your very first channel. Uh, this is the channel that I have. And you know what's interesting is when the radio came from the factory, I want to say the first 20, 25 channels were already pre-programmed. I think they are just, you know, calling frequencies that were out there. I know my ocean um, quad band radio was kind of the, the same way. So you may have to go in here and change them. I got rid of all of them. I programmed them to the way I wanted. So uh, this particular one is, um, you know, like in this case, I have it set to channel one. The receive frequency here is my 443.750. There's a five megahertz offset. So my transmit uh, frequency is 448. Uh, I came down here, the encode um, TX, that is the uh, CTCSS uh, tone uh, that's out there for our repeater. That's, you know, that's a drop down. You could just select it from the list here. Uh, it's wideband. Uh, the only other one, oh, here, if you want it to be part of your scan list, you know, you can select if you want to scan it or not. Uh, right now, I don't have it on. And then, of course, here you can give it the name. So what you end up doing is once you change this one, you can click on save. Um, and then I'll save it. And then what's interesting is you'll still be on the screen. Uh, you can go to click on the channel and it shows you that you were just on channel one. Um, it shows you all your other channels and notice they say in green that they have data. So you could see that I've already got these programmed and then starting looks like channel 31. It shows as null. So if we go to channel two, that will show you my second one, uh, that I've got set up along with the name on the bottom. And this is, I mean, like 95% of what you really need um, for programming. Super easy. Um, it, it's pretty cool. And then after you're done with all your channels, you can change it from channel to function. And then what's pretty cool is here you can select, you know, your if you're doing a frequency mode um, that's out here for the A and B. Uh, let me go back. 
Um, if you've got, if you've got uh, FM on, here's the light control. Remember, we had just set it to continuous. I had it originally, I think, for 15 seconds. Well, it just actually, we can put that back again. Um, and then let's see, what other ones do we have? Uh, the timeout is 120. So not every single option that's out there um, through the um, through the radio menu is here, but a lot of them are, and um, it's just a, you know a super easy way to change things without having to go through you know the tiny uh, the tiny mess or the tiny menu. Um, oh, here here what's cool is the TDH8. You can go ahead and change that. I don't know how it got to the H8, but we can put it back to the H3. Or you can get it to say whatever you want. Um, I know some people end up putting out their, their their call sign. So, anyways, when you're all done, what you end up doing is you end up clicking on the right button down in the lower right hand corner. It will write back to the radio, and then you should be good again. So, um, I'm not going to write back to the radio. I will just for the heck of it. I'm going to go back and reread. Um, I just don't want to rewrite anything that we may have changed or that I may have messed up here. Uh, there's one more section I wanted to hopefully show you guys. Um, I don't know about any of these other ones, like the menu on the bottom as far as the status and talk. Uh, I have not used those yet. Uh, let's see, what is the, the this bottom is translist. Oh, okay, so the RXTX list in the bottom uh, you have to log in to use that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the repeater is the exact same way. So anyways, I'm just using this super simple to make adjustments and some channels. Um, I did go through this menu to delete the additional channels that came from the factory that I didn't want. So um, took a little bit, but uh, it, it was still better than going through the uh, the radio menu on the radio itself. So Hopefully that helps you guys. If you guys have one of these radios and have any questions, um, if you do have any questions regarding anything or how I have something set up, uh, please, by all means, uh, you know, leave a comment. I'll try my best to answer. Um, if you have any suggestions for things that I've done wrong or said wrong, uh, please also leave a message. You know, we're all here to learn and help each other. So uh, that is always great. All right, stay tuned. Uh, next is the couple minutes of the unboxing and my initial uh, thoughts when I had opened the box um, in case you're interested. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. So today, a new portable ham radio arrived. This is the TID radio or TID radio or however you pronounce it. I know some of these uh, Chinese brand names are are kind of hard to pronounce. You never know which is the right way to say it. But this is the TDH3. Um, I did order this myself. I paid for it myself, so this video is not sponsored. Uh, taking a look, of course we got the owner's manual. And wow, first impressions are this thing is tiny. Pretty small, I mean, well, it's it's actually, it's pretty hefty. Uh, the battery's on it already. It's got a nice feel to it, just uh, in comparison. This is my Ocean, my uh, KGQ-10H. So definitely a little smaller, screen smaller, um, smaller factor, probably about the, maybe a little bit thinner too. So uh, we'll take a peek. And what else do we get in the package? Oh, it's nice to give you, yes, this has got USB charging, so no more drop-in cradle, which is nice. Uh, I know some of the other units now have got the, everybody's kind of switching to the uh, USB-C. Uh, this particular one actually charges, looks like in the bottom of the battery and not the radio itself, whereas my uh, Ocean actually charges in the radio. Um, not on the battery. I do have an Ocean, a 935G Plus uh, GMRS uh, handheld radio. That one also has the USB-C uh, charging ports on the on the battery themselves, on the battery itself. So uh, let's see what else you get. The hand strap, uh, basically the clip here for the the back, and then the antenna itself. And then this is a dual band. This is the uh, 70 centimeter, uh, two meter radio. So, 